Hey guys, and thank you so much for joining me for this video. Uh, I know it's been a minute since my last uh, uh, upload over a year actually, so why don't I take a minute to explain that and kind of explain why I've been gone for so long and then we'll get into what I want to see about this game here. Um, so about a year ago when War of the Spark came out, I started having weird computer issues. It would overheat, it would shut down on me, and so I had to spend a little bit of money and that took some time to get that resolved. And then right around the time I got that fixed, my local nerd store went out of business and uh, I felt kind of like almost like I was betraying them by playing this game and like trying to make this work and uh, you know it was this weird feeling I had so I took some time off from the game and you know I planned on getting back into it sooner uh, but of course that turned into you know a week turned into a month a month turned into a year and and here we are so um, I haven't logged in, I haven't really been been doing much in uh, Magic Arena at all, or even like Magic in general, um, even on paper. So, uh, you know, it's, it's been a minute, and, and I want to log back in and see what the game has to offer now. I was actually reading a, a blog post recently about some of the changes they've made, and they sound pretty good. Um, and then also, this is kind of my speed anyway with Magic. I've always kind of come and gone from the game. So I want to see how that translates into the arena and see if the experience is uh, is much different. So let's get into it. Let's see what the changes are. And then we'll play a few games and see if we can't get back into a rhythm of saving up some gold and opening some packs. Um, in the meantime, I will hide the camera so we can see the full screen. And we can kind of check out some of these features. So it looks like the questing feature is the same. Um, attacking with a certain number of creatures gets you gold and mastery experience casting 20 creature spells so these two will piggyback nicely again you get that mastery xp which is new to me so i'll have to figure out what that means um, from what i gather it does take gems so you've got to spend some money on the gems to get into the mastery experience piece of that um so i've got two quests actually to cast creature spells that's very nice and then you can win gold by winning games uh this is a daily win reward, so that's neat. Um, I don't know uh, if that resets every day or every couple of days. We will find out very soon, and then you get some experience. Uh, this is a weekly win reward, so you get experience into the ladder or into this new mastery system, um, which is actually here as well. So we've got the mastery. That's going to load. There we go. So this is the core set mastery system. Again, this is new to me, and this is a little confusing at first, so I'm not exactly sure if I need to spend the gems to unlock the Mastery Pass right away, or if by getting Mastery Experience it'll help me out. In other words, it will it will unlock this for me. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot to it. Um, this is my current level. I don't know if I can I can level up at all with it being locked or if this is some sort of um if that's some sort of way to lock progression behind money I, I don't know i don't know i'm not against it it's not all that much money gems to you know buy in and put into the game and the rewards look kind of cool so you get packs you get um you know with the uh the parallax card art which i don't love but they still give it to you that's kind of neat Gain access to all rewards by unlocking the Mastery Pass, but you also get some gems back, so that's also interesting. Two, four, six, eight. Get a thousand gold. So you get 800 gems back, thousand gems back, 1200 gems. So if you get to level 90 plus, whatever, you get a thousand gems back from the 3400. That only puts the net cost at 2400 gems. Gosh, there's, there's nine pages. But then I, it looks like this is for the whole core set block, so like July, August, September, somewhere in that time frame. So it might not be that bad of a purchase. The other thing I want to check out is when I last left the game, it was right around War of the Spark, and I had a few decks that were made. And it looks like um, the game does hand you some new decks. Now, I did a few tests before I logged in and, and made, set up this video. Um these decks were not there when I first logged back in um, so when I logged out and logged back in they showed up so that's that's kind of cool um, I'm pretty familiar with all the houses I actually thought this was my deck that I had made before this Boros deck so I was like hey wait a minute this looks awfully familiar um, so I'm pretty familiar with these guys uh, I don't feel like it would be a, a good test of of skill to come in and play with one of these 
um, two color decks right away. So what I'm going to try and do is play with one of those single color decks as if I'm just like a brand new player to the game. And you can see if I scroll down to my old decks, they're, uh, they're toast, right? I'm not even going to bother. I'm going to go ahead and delete them all probably without even a second thought. My cards are still there. My collection is still there, which is kind of cool. Uh, love that idea. But these are the old, the old decks you got, like e Eternal Lust was one of them. Um, gutter ball. I was with gutter snipe, my, my goblin buddy over there. Um, artifacts attack was one of the old, you know, core 19. I missed core 20 altogether. So, um, for me, it's going to be like jumping back in and, and getting into it. So let's, uh, first of all, let's go to the collection. If you're returning, um, I think you can packs oh no that's gonna make a new deck so let's not do that um go to the store and from the store i think the code is just core 21 they're not even trying to oh failure redeeming code core 21 capital well okay one of those codes should work for uh, redeeming cards or redeeming uh, card packs if you're just returning um, or maybe you don't have to enter it. Maybe they just give you the cards um, in the first place. So I'll we'll worry about that a little later on. Why it's not working. But let's see. So all I need to do is attack with 45 creatures. Cast 20 or cast 40 creature spells. So we'll play. Play menu comes up like it always has. Core set constructed. That's intimidating. Historic event, that's kind of cool. So all my decks, actually, so there we go. Maybe I shouldn't delete my um, my old decks because that core his, uh, constructed game is happening right now. I what, what this is about. Oh, so you got to pay 500 gold. Okay, I remember these. Just like always, you keep playing till you, till you lose three matches. And if you get, I think, yeah, if you win three... Oh, it looks like you win four now. You break even and you get three cards. That's kind of neat. Okay, but let's go back home. Oh, I don't want to exit the game. Let's go back home. Okay, let's just play a casual game. Nothing crazy. We'll play. Let's grab a single color deck. Beastmaster. That was a fun one, but you don't get that one by default. So let's just do like this blue Azure Skies deck. Okay, and you know what we'll do? Can we still check them out right here from the window? Window couple shore comer crabs just a one casting zero four a single spectral sailor a one casting one one flash with flying and you can pay for a draw card that's pretty useful again from the course at 20 which i missed altogether so a lot of these i'm not gonna know about a good old unsummon for those one wall of runes when wall of runes enters the battlefield you scry for one okay so a couple zero fours off the bat that's interesting Brineborn Cutthroat, another Murloc Pirate. Whenever you cast a spell during an opponent's turn, put them on the game. Lots of flash in here, so that's that's terrific. Coral Merfolk got a reprint. Two castings. Negate. Good, good. Okay. Get our Strix. It's a birdie. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. That's useful. Cloudkin Seer, a flying elemental wizard. Enters the battlefield, draw a card, but doesn't have flash. That's okay. Frost Lynx, elemental cat. Tap a creature opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap. Not have flash. I wish it did. Leapfrog. You cast a spell, then it gains flying. That's pretty decent. Three damage if they don't have a flying blocker. Warden of Evos Isle. Creature spells with flying you cast cost one less. That is useful. Two of those. Winged words. Okay, so it costs one less. If you control a creature with flying and... Oh, no, not and draw two, but the point of it is to draw two cards. So it's good if you don't have flying. It's better if you do. Okay, that's pretty cool. Dungeon Geists. When they enter the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap. For as long as you control the dungeon guy. So it's a 3 3 flyer to begin with. And you can tap a creature. Pretty good. Air Elemental, good old 4 4 flying. Windstorm Drake, a 3 3 flying. Other creatures you control flying get plus 1 plus 0. Oh, it's a nice kill card. 
And Riddle Master Sphinx. Oh, I've got a reprint. You can return a creature an opponent controls to his hand. That's pretty good. And then 25 islands. Now, when I was playing before, roughly a year ago, there was an issue with the mana count, the land count, and how many you would get in your starting hand. Let's see if they've worked on that at all. I'm going to go with this deck as our play deck. Here we go. Your timer fuse runs down and you don't have any extensions. That system's the same. Waiting for a match for a good bit. Hopefully that's uh, not a sign of a poor rating on my part. Maybe it is. Well, it looks like there's a new uh, friend system. That's pretty useful. I've always wondered why they didn't implement that right away. Okay, so here we go. New avatars have come out. That's very interesting. Yeah, okay. I like it. We'll hang on to it. We'll just get some blockers out right away. Another land, so we'll put that down. And we'll just... Looks like he's got something to cast there, you see that? No attacks. Opponent's turn, there we go. Go with the Warden. Hopefully he doesn't have enough damage to direct damage to just start killing everybody right away. Lots of land, so I'm gonna scry with the wall of runes. Put that on the bottom. You don't need any more islands. Remember the highest casting card I have in this whole deck is like five, maybe six. Maybe it was, was six with the Sphinx, but I'll, I'll get it. I'm not really worried about it. Drop my next flyer. Yep. I'm going to try and draw out a counter spell. Now, I forgot one thing. One of my quests is to attack with creatures, even though it's a zero four. So I'm going to do that, even though it's for zero, because um, it'll still help me with my quest. So no harm in attacking for zero if it just, uh, if the purpose is just to do. And I'll just keep attacking with flying until I get tired of it. Got all these silly blockers which don't have any any attack power. Mass is a new put X11 counters on an army you control. Okay, well I'll just return him to his hand and uh, call it a day then. So we'll go ahead and do that right now. So that goes away. I'm happy with that. All right, classic Sarcantuna trick right here. We're gonna leave the island in our hand. We don't want to give it up that it's just an island. We want to make him think it's a counter spell. What was that? We'll block one of them. Blitz of the Thunder Raptor. If that creature would die, it's an exile. Okay, so there's my exile pile. That's pretty interesting. Two islands. Lovely. Now I'll save one for a blocker. No reason to get crazy. A lot of goblins. Okay. He might be hanging on to some direct damage up here, too. Yeah, I'm gonna drop it. I need the creatures. I feel
feel like even though he's got, you know, just 1-1 one, one tokens, he's about to make them a little bit bigger, and that could really be a problem. I don't think I'm going to draw into a kill card anytime soon. Having a 3-3 blocker will help. I like Leapfrog, but I think Leapfrog is going to die to a token. Okay. Won that game with Mono Blue. That's pretty interesting. That And kind of encouraging. We can just move into the game and then get a win. Okay. Okay. Not bad, Wizards. Not bad. Okay. So I got 275 XP, 250 gold. Next level. It looks like paying the paying the monies will unlock this stuff without having to get the XP, perhaps. And that's what I was thinking. So the mastery pass is something you can play through as a free to play player, maybe. Oh boy, it's gonna take me a while to cast 40 creature spells. But that's kind of cool. I actually like that. Um, the mastery pass mechanic if it's just something I can play to and not have to achieve something else I went through back in the day uh, 20 well last year was that I hit mythic actually in this game um, and I really felt like I beat the game <laughs> like, I just I didn't have any reason to keep playing it and I was like oh wow I, I, I did it like okay cool cool I did it. so you know it was kind of in my head but um, it still was a feeling I had that I remember uh, the next day I was I didn't I didn't feel like playing anymore. I was like, okay, cool. Did that. Good to go. But I feel like I missed a lot, so I want to get back into it. I, you know, I, I do enjoy playing. do enjoy thinking of cool decks and get into... Hmm. This is interesting right here. So, so if I cast Winged Words to draw two giving Leapfrog flying with my next winged words cost less. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to hang on to it. So far, I don't love how much land is in this deck. Because it is blue deck, right? Like, it's pretty quick. It's almost like mono blue tempo. But, uh... Paradise Druid is hexproof. As long as it's untapped, it's got hexproof. Okay, that's kind of neat. Let's get uh, on to the next turn, then. No, 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 no. Let's not be silly. I used to do silly stuff like that, but you never know. You never know, so now I don't do more elves. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to... We're going to let that go. The reason I want to let that go is because I want to unsummon one of them. I think we unsummon the Paradise Druid. And then I can cast... Oh, I don't have my Leapfrog out. Okay, so that was a bit of a misplay. Ah, fooey. Not quite ready for that yet. We'll just pass the turn. Okay, okay. Bit of a misplay there on my part. It's been it's been a while though. It's been a while. If he attacks. I'm going to use this to scry the one. So I've got four islands. I know you can't see them because my, my picture's in the way. Yeah, you can kill the crab. That's fine. Kind of neat. Is that from War of the Spark? And it's always an island, which I don't need. So now I'm going to... 
draw a couple. There we go. This is a much slower game. That visionary is terrific. He must have done an event to get both of those. Uh, well, no, you can. One of them. One of the artworks will get it for everybody. Is that right? The Plague Crafter came back. Okay. Oh no, I guess it didn't come back. I guess it's still out. All right. Well, save that negate. Maybe use an unsummon to give Leapfrog flying. Okay. The, the reason I wanted to keep this hand is... Mutate. Whenever this creature mutates, return target permanent from your graveyard to your hand. That's oh, so he's mutating. Okay. I haven't seen mutate yet. New mechanic to me. I'll just unsummon. Maybe I could have negated the mutate, or is it a creature spell also? Well, we'll see what the correct way to play all this would have been. And so this is a, a Murloc with Flash. We're going to definitely save him for a minute. We'll just back, and we'll end our turn. We'll make a pretty big play on our opponent's turn here, except for Winged Words, but we'll have a flying... Oh, no, we won't. It's Flash, not flying. Yet. Yeah. Resolve. Non-creature spell. Looks like he's got heavy on the creatures, so that's not super terrific. That's a flyer. Coma Crab for the blocker here, so let's just go for it. I don't think we're gonna win this one, but we'll see. This is a uh, cards I haven't seen yet, so I don't really know exactly what I'm supposed to do to handle these. Got a terrific Boneyard Lurker here. That's nice. So you gain a life when it comes into play. It still enters tap, but it is a doom. This guy, he gets to die. He's thinned out the battlefield a little bit. I'm fine with that. Let's see if he actually attacks. I'll just take it. I'm going to save my unsummon for his turn, right? It's an instant, so my Murloc gets a plus one, plus one counter. Um, I'm still not going to block with him, because then he'd be a 3-2 only, and these Land of War Visionaries would kill him. Uh, and he doesn't need the mana now, so now these are just two twos for him. Look, he's got all this mana going crazy over here. So if I time this right, it's hexproof until it's tapped. So if he attacks, it'll tap then it's no longer hexproof. See that? So now we've got timing on my side. And I'm not blocking. I don't... I don't care. I should have enough mana to... I've got enough mana to negate something and unsummon his Boneyard Lurker.
Oh, if you cast the spell for its mutate cost, put it under or over target non-human creature you own. It may mutate. Okay. Goodbye. Healthy bit of damage. And now he's going to mutate again. Is that the idea? Or mutates. Return to So he's choosing the Boneyard Lurker. After even. Okay. Really use any other card than a land right now. So it must be stopping him for the mutation. Mutation's Paradise Druid. That's an interesting mechanic. I'll have to read up on that. I really don't know much about it. for now because I can under the assassin's trophy which is stinky because I wanted to give my cutthroat another pet over here I don't I don't have any pets hmm so if I gang block, I lose them both. And he gets this mutation back and can plaguecrafter his way plaguecrafter his way to my heart. And I don't like that idea. Cycling's back. That's good to know. Okay. Trample. So this game's over. I'm gonna attack with both of them, because remember, I have a quest to attack. And to the victory goes Endbringer 66. I reach. Oh, it fights a creature. How funny. <laughs> that was a good fight. Okay, there we go. Excellent work. I don't mind losing, that's okay. My goal isn't to win every game, my goal is to complete these quests. That was a tough one for this deck to, to fight through. Of course, if I was doing this, uh, you know, if I wanted to keep this deck going, I'd probably sub in some more flying, but I just want to see how good they'll do. Just out the gate, see if we can't make anything happen. Okay, so I've got 750 gold. I've attacked with 45 creatures. And I got 500 XP. So, am I going to be able to cast... I've cast seven creature spells in each of these two games. So, you know what I want to do? I'll take a look at a deck. Typically, these mono-white decks have a lot of creatures in them. So, let's just see. Arm stray. Look at them. Oh, they're cute. Okay. Let's just try this mono white deck. I have a feeling we're going to do Sarah Angels. Oh, no, they didn't come back. Those are just in, in the arena. Okay, let's check it out. It's pretty expensive on the top end, doesn't it? Okay, let's see what happens. Just to get those creatures cast. See if we can't move through two of those quests instead of just one. In a little... 35 minute session of, of Magic the Gathering here. I don't want to get too crazy. I'm surprised the wait between games is as long. Maybe everybody's doing uh, one of the events that. Maybe that's where it's at. 
is the uh, the eventing again. I remember doing that. I did a couple of drafts. Apparently now you can actually draft against real players where it's you're in a group with other players and hopefully you can still chat with everybody and actually draft and keep the cards that you draft. Oh, that's that would be awesome. I will have to do that. My username is Zach. Okay, Zach. I got you. Okay. No first turn play, but I got a two, a three, and a five. And they're all creatures, so I don't have to mulligan. I'm okay with that. Of course, I'll get nothing but land for the first three turns, but, th but that's okay, because this deck does get pretty expensive. And I'd like to put Spiritual Guardian down on turn five. Strike is. Cool. So he could buff his Igneous Curb, but first strike wins. So good there. Oh, pacifism. Okay. I think this gets reprinted every core set, but we're on to core 21 now, so. Have to get used to core 21 cards. This will be a good blocker for that. Healer's Hawk. Just first strike. No. Vigilance. Whenever a non human creature you control attacks, look at the top six cards of your library. I'm not exactly sure what's happening with this mechanic here, but it is insane right now. Okay. Why are they indestructible? Block the hawk. Block the cur. It's plus X plus O, or X is the number of other attacking creatures. and attacking. Do they stay out? This is insane. What is this? Wow, that's quick. Whenever a non-human creature roll attacks, human, human, okay. That's a dog. Let's pacify the dog. with Angel of Vitality. I don't see a reason to save it because I don't want it to die in the event that I start gaining some life back here. This might be... I might be dead. We'll see if he's got a haste creature. Okay, so these are humans. So if he attacks with them, he doesn't... Hooey. Shock. Shock is still in the game. <laughs> there we go. I'm toast. Yeah, good old shock defeat. So that that was quick. Uh, I, I wonder if that's like his perfect hand with that deck is to get uh, I don't even know, get all those counters out or the one mechanic was searching for creatures that okay sixteen out of twenty. Uh, one mechanic was searching six cards and dropping all those creatures into play, tapped and attacking and with indestructible. Uh, okay. And the attack doesn't have to go through, they just have to attack and show up. Fascinating. That is a good amount of land. First, even. I'd like the Pridesmate. He'd be a 4-4, but it's just one creature. 
Damn. That's a little better. I don't know if that was smart. We'll put pacifism down there. Odds are I'll draw into plenty of land with these starter decks, but we was. This has some interesting synergy right here with these charm strays. I kind of like that idea. Ooh, he's playing mill. Okay. There's the hoping. Assistant petitioners. Here we go. I'm going to block one. Life won't be an issue. How many turns do I have? 49? Or how many cards, rather? Of this. Kill the planeswalker. Can't be milling all those cards. Just take it all. Remember your nightmares remain. Got another one. So he doesn't have the land problem that I have. He's got kind of the opposite, but he might still be able to squeeze away with the victory here. Don't love all the milling that's happening. I'm gonna do it on my cat just to make every creature a threat and then I can attack with everybody. He can gang block if he wants to. So we beat Mill pretty heavily with, uh, pretty handily with some creatures out there. And I think we might have even gotten away with casting six of them to complete our second quest of the day. Hopefully. And if not, it's just one more creature we can jump into a game, cast the one and be done. Got it. Cool. So now let's check on this mastery dude. Okay. Here's the mastery ladder. Number two, got a pack. Okay, okay. That's pretty nifty. I like that. But the baubles are here. Maybe you don't get anything for the fifth one. Okay, I see. So this was a... Uh, was a question mark that I will get if I purchase the ladder. I'll get the bottom row, maybe? Okay, I see. But I still get the top row, so I still get packs and or One set mastery orb. Whatever that is. Okay, so let's open up our pack and call it a day. Good, they're all new. We got ourselves rare. Primal Might. That's cool. All new to me. All new. Prowess, huh? 
Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, it gets plus one, plus one to land a turn. That's pretty useful. Burn, especially. Really useful. This heart fire immolator. Ogre, I think that's a reprint from like a... Uh, Cards, then discard. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one. Blood Glutton is a five casting, four through that's expensive. Keen Glide Master. Target creature gains flying until end of turn. That's kind of neat. Cool, guys. Well, thank you all so much for watching this quick little video as I return to Magic the Gathering the Arena. See you next time.